Oh, I had like a gas bubble there. Welcome to the WAN show, guys. You it's uh, I. Well, I I can't control when a gas bubble comes. <laughs> I mean, maybe you have just magnificent gas control, but yeah. not everyone shares. There's, there's multiple that chambers talent. along my throat, so I can capture it and then hold it for later. Frog Luke. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm pretty sure that that's like a breathing thing, not like a <laughs> stomach air thing. No. It, yeah. It's along my throat. It's along your throat. Yeah. I've never noticed this. Yeah. Well, it's internal. I mean, I've inspected the internals of your throat. <laughs> You know, probed. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, right. We have interesting topics today that oh, don't yeah. have to do with throat probing. Yeah, no throat probing. Uh, <laughs> Adblock Plus, now bringing you ads. A little bit of throat probing. A little bit of throat probing, yeah. <laughs> Get throat probed right there. Uh, <laughs> the iPhone 7, is it the fastest phone ever? Google terminates Adblock Plus's AdSense account. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, baby! <laughs> that was a one-two punch if I've ever heard of one. Also, you t uh, nope, that one's not as interesting. U.S. government issues an official <laughs> Note 7 recall. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. The Correct. Note 7. You might say that that whole thing blew up in their faces. Oh, man. I was trying to think of some pun thing. You beat me to it. Yeah, something with blue and blow. <laughs> You would go with. Only if you're choking. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Oh, do you think someone came down here and got Well, I hope you were right spot. It's Birthdays, Fresh Books, and Linda. All right. Hooray. Good job, Colton. Good job. All right. So the WAN. Oh, my keyboard is like. See, this is something that continues to. I think I've ranted about this on WAN show before, so I'm not going to do it again today. But keyboard input mm -hmm. should never lag. Yeah. It should never lag. It should be like, you know how they have real time operating systems, like the kind that runs your car, where it's just like, no, there is no lag on the ABS braking system. No, we should treat keyboard inputs like ABS brakes. I mean, it's not the same thing. No, it is not the same. Th I'm aware that the keyboard, unless you are playing a driving game and you bind your e-brake to the space bar, then your keyboard is effectively a brake. <laughs> oh man. And I broke his head. Oh, a little bit. His brain is broken now. Oh. Okay, the one, sorry, I just need to do this Facebook post. <laughs> oh. What do we got? Nothing. Nothing. What? Sorry, we have no what? topics for you today. Sorry, I was reading the Twitch chat. Forget it. Yeah. Someone confused me because they have a new star thing because I guess finally our subscriber thing works. Oh, I think way to go Colton again. Yeah. Yeah, I think Colton fixed it because he was like, Linus, Goes to an error page did, or something? did you know that doesn't work? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, are you ever going to fix it? I was like, no. There's, so there's, there's no benefits at all. There's no emoticons and there's no subscriber symbol other than a star. But oh, there okay. will be, someone, theoretically. Someone, ha someone subscribed? Yeah. He's wow. a sub from my own stream. Oh, I see. Should yeah. I change it to sub only mode so we can just talk to him? The, the, the one person. <laughs> I don't even know oh how. Oh god, what a dick. I don't even know I'm how. To, here, am I even a mod? I don't I don't even know if I'm a mod. Am I even signed in? I don't even think I'm Yeah, I'm signed in. I'm signed in. This is my channel. I should be able to uh I should be able to change to to sub only mode. I, I don't even understand how this works. Uh, Everyone's like they... pre-recorded. Oh, it is most assuredly not pre-recorded. We are definitely we are definitely still working on this. All right. I'm just going to keep clicking this gear button in the bottom until I can Clear chat, hide chat, edit appearance. I don't remember the command. They changed it. They changed it. They did actually change it. That's fine. I give up. Okay, let's move into our first topic of the day. Adblock Plus now bringing you ads. The original article here is from Ars Technica. Let's go ahead and drop that in the. Uh, let's go ahead and drop that in the Twitch chat there. Adblock Plus finds the end game of its business model: selling ads. So the company 
is bo boasting that they have more than 90 million users willing to see pre-whitelisted ads. So in a nutshell- because when you put them in by default, that means they're willing. Yes. So they're launching a self-service platform to sell pre-whitelisted ads that will have to meet its acceptable ads criteria. And we've actually covered the acceptable ads program in the past that other than Adblock Plus basically being a bunch of buttheads at various uh, did you did you did you turn on subscriber only? Mode? Yeah. So oh, what a terrible person. <laughs> I'll turn it off in a second. <laughs> it's only Trey and Nitro Blast. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it off. Okay. Terrible. To be clear, I do not recommend that you subscribe to the Atlantis Tech. Oh, how do I turn it off? Twitch account. <laughs> We only stream once a week for one and a half hours. That is not a good value. If you're going to subscribe to a Twitch channel, this is why I haven't really been been chasing, you know, getting that go. subscribe button going. Yeah. I know this isn't a great sales pitch as far as like... <laughs> don't subscribe to us. <laughs> driving donations to Linus Media Group. But there are like other ways that you can contribute where you might actually get, oh, I don't know, maybe like a t-shirt in return or something like that. Yeah. So. I, I, just, I mean, do it if you must, but we don't plan to do a whole lot of subscriber-only chat. Anyway, no. so we've talked a Probably little bit about... the only time ever. Like, we've talked about the acceptable ads program in the past, um, noticing that some things about it are good, like the fact that people opting in through their Adblock Plus app or widget or whatever the case may be, will be able to contribute ad revenue to the advertisers that willingly adhere to the acceptable ads program. But the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the way that the evil creeps into this is Adblock Plus charging advertisers to be a part oh, of the acceptable ads program, to be pre-approved for it. So basically the acceptable ad system is now providing um, is now providing Adblock Plus with its main revenue source. So there you have it. And the original article here is from Business Wire, but Adblock Plus enters ad tech with the launch of SSP slash ad platform. I wouldn't cut in, yep. but we are definitely not online right now. Oh really? Yes. Oh, that's weird. Yes. We definitely seem to be online. Yes, we do. And we were, and nothing noticeably changed. But we are not currently. Oh. Well, then we'll be right back, won't we? The whole chat is talking about how we're offline, and it is currently offline for me as well. Yeah, there's now four subscribers in the stream. I think. Okay. So, are we live now? Yes. Were we live at all before? Uh, I still don't see a feed, but it does say we are live. And there's a circle spinning in the middle. Yes, my friends, we are live. Oh man, that like tripped me out because I was looking at this <laughs> computer and the mouse is moving here and it was moving there. I'm, I'm going to switch out of that view. Yeah, there yes, you go. we're done with that view. So back to Adblock Plus. Maybe subscriber mode broke it. Right, okay. So we should just never do it again. Okay, so... Uh, they take a cut, right? Adblock Plus takes a cut from the acceptable ads. That's what I've heard. I, I don't know if I've actually read that in here. So they originally introduced the program back in 2011 as a way to allow um, websites that wanted to not have intrusive ads with intrusive placements to allow Adblock Plus users to whitelist their sites so they could at least still get some revenue, even if they didn't get the big, fat, beefy CPMs that come along with things like autoplay video so that's, or, or ads with uh, sound. I don't even know what the metrics are for those. But that's essentially what the Linus Texas forum has always done. Yeah. Just because we didn't want, like, when looking at the forum ourselves, because neither of us run Adblock, we didn't want it to be a shitty experience. Yeah. So basically, more than 90% of Adblock Plus's 100 million users apparently chose to allow these respectful and useful ads to display on their favorite websites. Um, I don't remember if it was an opt out or an opt in at the beginning, so don't don't quote okay. me on any of okay. that. Yeah. But basically now they have created their, this, this platform that will allow you to actually buy ad space, like pre-whitelisted ad space 
through Adblock Plus. So um, and you would yeah you would have to. It's kind of brilliant if you think about it. So they're using uh, a go-between company called Combo Tag to get the ads. Um, yeah, I don't know. They didn't ask the underlying ad providers about a deal of any kind. Um, Google and AppNexus are both ending associations with Combo Tag. Yeah, we should actually. That's a separate article here. I'm just going to post well, that in the Twitch chat they're here. Just, they're, yeah. yeah, they're very related. Yeah. So, so the original article here is from Engadget. I'm just going to pull this up, but. So, Google has terminated the Adblock Plus AdSense account, which is a uh, you know, little bit of a hard stop in terms yeah. of what they were trying to do. If the plan was for them to serve Google ads through it, then, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. That's pretty rough. Um, there's like, I don't know, this is not very surprising. Not very interesting, in my opinion. A lot, the whole internet is like freaking out about this. I don't use it, which is probably why it's not that interesting to me. Yeah. But like the amount of people that basically went like, this is the ultimate betrayal, you are worse than anything that has ever happened, was extremely large. Um, to which, uh, I don't know. Running Adblock is like... Yeah, AppNexus said that Adblock is essentially setting up toll booths on public roads. That's brutal taking ad money that should be going straight to the publishers. That's brutal. That um, makes me dislike Adblock more than I did before. I mean, the thing about the thing about this is that they are saying Adblock Plus is is being opportunistic and being buttheads, but what they aren't doing is proposing an actual solution to the problem. Yeah. Um, like I actually it wasn't in any of these articles unfortunately, but I was I forget why I was reading it, but I was reading about Adblock use over the last couple of years and the way that it's trending with millions upon millions of new adblock users per year and the fact that the, i mean okay i'm not going to say fact it's a very strong statement but in my mind i believe with the cause of this trend being the intrusive ads that exist that force people to look for an alternative and by intrusive ads i don't even necessarily just mean video ads like i'm talking stuff that downloads files onto your computer yeah. like there's some really 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 bad ads out there that ad blocking programs do help you circumvent yeah um and there's some web pages that are just actually unusable without some form of blocker so google and uh so so Google and AppNexus are kind of coming at these guys saying they're taking money that should be going to the publishers. Um, but the fact of the matter is that these publishers, even though they are ultimately doing it to themselves, Some in my them. mind, not all of them, many of them. So we're not in the Adblock Plus program, so our ads on the forum are blocked yes. by most people. So the bad publishers are doing it to themselves by adding intrusive, horrible advertising to their sites and effectively doing it to everyone and no one's really doing anything to fight this and you know you could kind of go well adapt or die but have you noticed that even you know serious you know editorial websites like a perfect example is uh, since the perch perch takeover anantech now has those um where are they oh they're there on mobile here hold on let me fire up an article uh where are they here we go. Oh, man. Really? They now have, like, trending today. Surrey casino manager gets oh. fired, releases five secrets to beat the house. Like, they now have those, like, sponsored articles on. Them. I mean, even very serious, oh. like, newspaper publications on their websites have that stuff linking to those, those like, those rabbit hole Faco clickbait sites. Articles. But the reality of it is, is that this is now a cycle that is going to continue to snowball until someone does something. And it I don't have been. a clear answer. It has been continuing to snowball. I kind of because think it, it would be cool if Google spearheaded sort of what Adblock Plus is trying to do. Right. And was just really aggressive about it. Um, and basically got a YouTube Red style system right. where you could pay in and if you wanted to black, uh, block essentially all the ads, you could pay in and then Google would distribute a portion of that money depending on how much time they spent on different websites to different publishers. I wish I had that article I was reading. Apparently Google Red subscriptions have really slowed down as well and it doesn't look like that's the answer either. Um, people just want to block instead of pay money. Because, because basically they're selling something that people are already getting for free. Um, I remember what I was reading. It was uh, it was an article about is ad blocking illegal, 
And the answer is no, but circumventing an anti-ad block mechanism that's in place on a website is, depending on where you live and what the applicable local laws are. So Right, but then like so that's, putting that on your site kills you. Putting that because on your site there's can effectively so kill many you. people that bought, like if we put that on a line of sick tips, I think overall traffic would go to like 10% or right. something ridiculous. With that said, your monetizable traffic would be identical in theory, except that the way that you sell advertising space to advertisers is with your overall traffic numbers, with your reach. Um, so, so it's like this, it's like this, this horrible like tar and cigarette butt soup of like, if you don't have ads, if you don't give in and sell it's obnoxious similar to the video ads. Question. Yeah, it's obnoxious, but because of how people because of the way that people use the things, way the consumers are behaving you have to do it to keep up or you can lay off all your staff or you can you know stop doing investigative journalism and you can just kind of repost what you saw from somewhere else that is still managing to keep their traffic numbers up high enough to actually employ or a staff looking at youtube these days just rage and create drama about things and then create a clickbaity title that lines up with that and then you'll be very successful yeah, so I mean, to be clear, like I kind of, I really enjoy the position that we're in right now. With that said, the landscape changes so fast online and you oh, know, yeah. two years from now, I could be lamenting you know, any one of these things. Um, Maybe all we'll make are videos about how to make money like the lawn mowing thing. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows what will be in two years? <laughs> okay, probably not. But for us, being in control of our own ad sales, where we, and, and we, I mean, it's, it's something that we didn't do completely by accident, where we consciously try to make our integrated ad spots uh, somewhat interesting and applicable to our audience. Um, that puts us in a position where we can demand even better CPMs than what someone playing, you know, obnoxious video ads in the middle of a written article can. Yeah. Even though a lot of the time they're doing as much, if not more, work than us. It's just, it's a function of the medium, and I ultimately actually can't do anything about it. I just happen to be sitting on the right side of that particular um, dilemma. I don't know what to call it. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Um, all right, speaking of sitting on the right side of things, Apple seems to be on the right side of performance. Oh. Is the iPhone 7 the fastest phone ever? Does anyone care? I, I'm pretty sure people care. Why? What do you mean why? Why? Why do people care about an iPhone? I don't know. No, fastest. Oh. Oh, why no, would it they being care? that much faster? Like, I don't want to be a, a dick, but most phone apps right now, like I have a, a very good friend of mine that I was best friends with when we were in high school and stuff like that, is a mobile app developer, makes relatively high-end mobile games. Right. His relatively high-end mobile games have to be able to scale down to phones that have 500 megabytes of RAM. Right. These apps are being made for pretty shit phones. Right. Keep on swearing. Sorry. Intentionally. Pretty not very good phones. <laughs> Intentionally. Good. Um, and like my phone, which isn't that new at this point, Z5 Premium, other than having like glitches and bugs with it and the headphone jack is weird and stuff, performance wise, great. I can do like whatever I want completely fine with extremely minimal lag, if any noticeable at all. So, I mean, I guess there's a couple different angles on this. Number one is do we need faster phones? and I think on the iOS side of things, it's a little bit less of an issue than it is on the Android side of things because at least those older phones are running smaller screens. Yep. So especially in the case of gaming, they're not going to have to push as hard. So you, could, you can target a large install base of iPhone users, which is a huge concern on the Android side and why you target these very, very basic specs oh, yeah. because yeah. the hardware is all over the place. So you can target a very wide, huge install base of iPhone users without necessarily um, pandering to the lowest common denominator the way that you would on Android. At the same time, tuning that up is a huge amount of extra work when you could just build it the same way for both. Right. <laughs> so you're probably just going to build it the same way for both. Look, I'm trying to justify this, okay? <laughs> Can you just help me out a little bit here? I just, uh, uh, like, okay, I'm never going to say that more performance is a bad thing. No, just like, and it's not. It's not at all. That's not what I'm saying. It's great that it's a fast phone. That's awesome. We need to keep doing that. There's just so many other things that I would have rathered 
be the main headline for this phone I mean, then it's fast yeah i do i do still I, I do still need to get in a unit for review i will do a review of it and i'll talk about how it is really really fast and to be clear the iphone 6s is still noticeably snappier when using it than any android phone that i've used um and but so that's I mean, mostly because of the drive right um it's partly due to that partly because the processor is really really fast okay which brings me to the other key point is i don't understand why anyone is making this the headline for the iphone 7 because the iPhone 6s was already arguably faster than any Android phone on the market, so I don't really see how we were expecting um, a follow-up <laughs> It's happened to the A9. That's that's true, but Apple is not AMD. Ah. So... Ah. Ooh. Oh, burn. Ooh. Sorry, AMD. Sorry, Ooh. sorry. So and, that you might want to give some before people freak out. Okay, okay. I should probably explain. Um, so when they replaced the uh, their top of the line six core, the uh, 1090 or 1100T, when they replaced their top of the line six core with a top of the line eight core FX8150, if I recall correctly, please don't quote me on the exact model numbers, but it's basically there. there were benchmarks more than one. <laughs> where the new 8 core, because of its shared resources between the core modules, was actually slower than the flagship processor that it replaced. Um, not in all, in heavily multi-threaded benchmarks, Whoa. the 8 core uh, did perform better, if I recall correctly. Um, so there you go. I, wow, I, gee, I really don't know what to say about this other than that it is faster. And you'll talk more about this, I'm sure, Geek when bench. you get your review going. There's a new Geekbench. Hey, look, we're still yet. reviewing that thing. Yep. Promoted stories. See what we're talking about? How Anne Hathaway became the most hated celeb in Hollywood. Wow. Take a celebrity name, put a screenshot of their face, put hated or loved. Or loved. Or, or crazy. Controversial. Top five crazy things that they did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Wow, we really don't have a lot of good topics for WAN show this week. Nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, US the government official uh, issues official Note 7 recall. This stuff has been legitimately insane. Yeah, this is from the Washington Post. Cars Are you already uh, copying that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cars lighting on fire. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Like some, someone, I think, was at a garage sale or something and like left their phone in the car to charge or something like that. And then their Jeep just completely lit on fire and it completely destroyed it. Um, there's been a lot of issues. I heard through John, I don't know, but John's usually a pretty good source, so it's probably fine, um, that Samsung issued a patch which like capped the, what the battery could charge to, trying to get people to issue the freaking... Uh, right. Not refunds, but recalls. Yep. Trying to be like, hey, like your phone sucks now. I, I think it was like 60% or something like that. I don't really? remember. Sorry if I'm quoting you wrong, John. Um, but like capping their battery percentage, which is an interesting thing, kind of knowing that they can do that. Um, and then trying to get people to bring in their phones for recalls so that they stop freaking lighting things on fire. And now the US government wow. is like, hey, guys, actually do it. So. Hopefully it happens. Hopefully people do it. So, yeah. so far there have been 26 reports of burns and 55 reports of property damage. So um, I'm kind of wondering at this point, I, I haven't seen anything about this. It could be in the note that would be in the notes. <laughs> I get it. Um, that would be kind of unfortunate if I missed it, but airlines. Yeah, no, I saw that, uh, who was it? Uh, one of the Canadian airlines, basically they didn't ban them yet, but they advised their passengers against it. flying with it. Yep. Okay. Um, but like that's, uh, I would probably want that band. I, I'm really, I'm really surprised about, I'm surprised that so many people are not bringing them in because right now you're in a position where you can bring it in for a refund. So you actually just get your money back. And now that the iPhone seven is out, uh, ah, yeah. you can get one of those. Um, with no headphone jack. With no headphone jack. Did and you see? I, okay, I don't have it right now, but I can try to find it. But did you yeah. see the like the lineup in front of the Apple Store for the phone launch in Denmark? No, I didn't. There's two people waiting. Oh, really? And they have like balloons all around the door, and like some guy has like a cannon that shoots out little confetti things, and the two guys are just like, okay, like they don't even look excited. They might not even be there for an iPhone Seven. Like they might be there to pick something else up. Oh, seriously? Like, uh, I'm not sure. I'll try to, f here, I'll try to find it. I don't see it. iPhone fans line up for the iPhone 7 for two days. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. no, I think, I think it's probably doing fine. Um, 
Maybe it was like a joke. Maybe. It's possible Possible it was a joke, because... Uh, iPhone 7 released at Apple Store in Denmark. I mean, that I'm not like sure if Apple that's store. real. Here, hold on. Oh, let me screen share you. Hi, I always forget we can do this. I can't. There we go. You know what? You know what I think? I don't think that's an Apple Store Apple Store. I think that's like... Um, there are like chairs. Like people were waiting. But I, I hear you. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's like like a Compu2000, yeah. like uh, simply computing. Like yeah. I think that's like an... Apple specialty, specializing just computer store. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that logo isn't, it's a really grainy, it's kind of yeah. funny that it's about the iPhone 7. It's really grainy, crappy video. Yeah. Um, but like, it, that doesn't look like the proper logo and stuff. That is interesting though. All right, Samsung has apparently finally stopped airing Note 7 commercials in Korea. So that's good. <laughs> yep. They've stopped airing ads for a phone that you definitely shouldn't buy because it might light on fire. Um, Good job. Man. Proud of you, Samsung. What a huge disaster this thing is for them. I mean, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm sure some of some viewers are probably sitting there wondering, like, why wouldn't Samsung want people to just, you know, hold on to it? And if it blows up, then just kind of get it replaced at, at that time. Because a recall is, like, really, really expensive, especially when many of the units are supposedly fine. And the answer is that Samsung has to pay millions of dollars to issue a recall and deal with fixing all of those phones. Okay, Samsung could end up paying millions upon millions of dollars if their phone ultimately ends up, um, you know, lighting, uh, I don't know, like a high-rise building on fire and a few hundred people die. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a much bigger problem. So Samsung has to... Even if they, on their side, are kind of sitting there going, okay, so, you know, math numbers. The fact that they've had like, 26 reports of burns yeah. and 55 reports of uh, property damage? Yeah. Like, holy crap. Like, this seems, like, pretty likely for something really bad to happen. So even if Samsung was sitting there going, okay, it's only a few thousand phones that are actually affected. Even if they, they kind of did that math and went, the odds are, like, pretty darn low. Still, one of those phones, if they don't, at least look like they are doing absolutely everything in their power someone, someone to get those a, phones back. Yeah. They, they are. They could end up being liable for it. Someone on a plane has their phone go up and the plane goes down. Yeah. Someone on, in a car on a bridge, phone goes up. Something crazy like that. Not good. So anyway, Note 7 shipments have been suspended for over a week now, and some analysts expect that the sales won't resume until next month. Uh, when they have time to retool the phones and get them sent back out to retailers. Jeez. All right. Game Room has been launched. What is this and what why do we room? care? GameRoom.me. Single client for all your PC games. Uh, Steam? Okay. Automatically import. Scans and imports games from everything else, which doesn't matter. Steam, all good old Steam games, games, Origin, you play. Even the ones you, you would definitely okay. I never bothered to install. Okay. Uh huh. The Holy only difference is crap. I don't care because you would still have to launch it through the actual thing when you just like how if you have purchased a game through Steam, that's a Ubisoft game. You have to launch it. If you launch it through Steam, it then has to open UPlay anyways and launch it through there. Who put this in the dock? Colton. Colton. Okay, so what what does it do? So it wants to plug into all clients. It just aggregates all the games that are on your computer. I know, I know. That's I mean, didn't it. they try and build that into Windows Vista? And didn't uh, no the one game care? Folder, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The game folder. I actually kind of liked the game folder. Game folder I, was pretty cool. I used the game folder, but it was nice because it was built into Windows. Yeah. Well, Microsoft decided they didn't care it about games anymore. It wasn't a room. No, it was like, a folder. It was a folder. Yeah. But it was games, not just game. Oh, I mean, yeah. game room. Another secret feature about this app is that it aggregates all the games in your computer and then picks one of them, and that game goes into the game room. Yeah. That's a stupid feature. Does it actually do that? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> no. I, I did that way too seriously. <laughs> oh, man. 
Oh, this is interesting. All right, so the original article here is from CTV News. HP is apparently buying Samsung's printer business for $1 billion. Wow. So basically, they're just buying out Samsung having cheap printers that are like kind of okay, so they can sell more expensive printers that are also kind of okay. Also, Samsung's printer tell. business includes more than 6,500 printing patents, which is a lot. Cool. So it will help it go from traditional copiers to multifunction printers. Said the deal will also strengthen its position in laser printing. Wow, the, this is boring. The deal is expected to close within a year. Uh. Alibaba has fired employees for hacking their way to free mooncakes. What the? Hundreds of holiday cakes were purloined through weakness in the internal website. So let's say, for example, that Linus Media Group were to have a mooncake program. <laughs> Which is more common than you might think what for is a like moon, an what Asian is for an okay. Asian company. What is a mooncake? Okay, mooncakes are something to do with some kind of Chinese something or other. It's like a seasonal item. It's like it's like a fruit cake. I mean, okay. it's nothing like a fruit cake because they're gross and they're just full oh. of like egg. Um, oh. Yeah, it's like I'm. Okay, if you're likely to be offended by what I'm thing. about to say, yeah. then you better tune out and oh kind of come back in a minute oh no. or so. That's never a good sign. But, like, Chinese dessert. Oh. No. Like, red bean soup. It doesn't even, it doesn't sound like dessert. <laughs> it doesn't look like dessert. And most importantly, it does not taste like dessert. It doesn't have sugar in it. It has a grainy ass texture to it. <laughs> it's just awful. It leaves a wicked bad aftertaste. What about mango jelly? And it has beans in it. Hey, that thing that beans. we used to get that he'd put on the thing upside beans. down and then he'd lift it off. Okay. And it was like okay. yellow and then there was the thing. Okay, in. yes. So there are some there are some good. Chinese puddings that I can abide. But my wife, okay? She eats what she calls Chinese donuts. What are those? As I'm far as I can that. tell. They are flour and bread, deep fried. There's no sugar sprinkles. There's no sugar in them, as far as I can tell. Again, it's like, have you ever had a beaver tail? Yeah. Okay. It's like a beaver tail, but with no toppings, stuff. no sugar, no cinnamon. That sounds Nothing. really unappeasing. It's just, it's just like a deep fried pastry. And I'm sitting here going, that is not dessert. Even Chinese jello is awful. They have this jello. You know, you know um, Yvonne's layered jello that uses the the regular jello yeah. and like whipping cream infused jello. Yeah. Okay. So I got suckered into this Chinese jello because it looked like my wife's jello. And my wife is Chinese, so I kind of put two and two together. I went, this is yeah. how my Chinese wife makes jello. This is how her Chinese relatives probably make jello. Yep. They are probably the same thing. Yeah. It looked a little different, okay? Like the colors were kind of pastel instead of being like like dark jello colors. Okay. And then the, the lighter layers were also light. So okay. It, so it looked quite similar. No, it turns out it has like rice in it. And it's not sweet. Why is there rice in it? And I'm just like Rice is the like Why? Probably as far away from dessert as you could pretty much ever get. Some like rice pudding rice. is pretty good. Okay. I can do rice pudding with like a sweetened yogurt added to it. I don't it think I've ever had rice like, pudding. Okay, we I'm, I'm not like brown well versed and, like, enough in this topic to talk about it. I so guess. I don't remember how I got into this. Right, um, mooncakes are like... disgusting. So people got stole, people got fired for stealing mooncakes. You know what? They could have had my mooncake. I I used to get mooncakes at uh, at NCIX where where I used to work. And uh, every year I would bring them home and I would give them to my in-laws because brownie points and they're disgusting and I want nothing to do with them. And so it was actually one, it was actually a pretty cool perk. But all the other, all the other white people who worked there would get them and they'd just be like, this is very expensive. <laughs> I sure wish I had something else for the money you spent on this. <laughs> oh um, man. Cakes. That's that's a little sad. Sorry. Anyway, so oh, okay. Actually, it looks like all of this information was actually in here. Oh, so nice. it's the Mid Autumn Festival, which starts on September fifteenth, and the holiday is commemorated through the exchange and sharing. A of salted cakes. duck egg surrounded so by a thin crust. Wow, I'm uninterested. 
So, so hold on. Um, oh. So, the round pastry is filled with lotus seed paste or red bean paste, and then sometimes the salted yolk of a duck egg surrounded by a thin crust. If that sounds good to you, then thumbs up. Then, then good. Have some mooncakes. Um, yeah, they're apparently in huge demand leading up to the festival, and Alibaba offered their employees one mooncake each. Um, complete with one Alibaba plush inside. Additionally, cakes were sold at cost to employees for friends and family through an internal e-commerce page. So four software engineers were able to add software to the system, directing extra moon cakes to themselves. I mean, how many how many moon cakes do you need? They how found that the that... four had amassed themselves 124 boxes of cakes. How are you going to eat 124 lotus seed paste cakes? 124 duck eggs. I mean, how many ducks does it take? To make 124 and how duck is eggs. That, like, not even in the like, wow, you must have ate a lot of mooncakes, bro. But like, how is that worth it? Like, I can't, I can't imagine that you would honestly think that you wouldn't get caught for that ever. <laughs> like what? Like what made them think the company doesn't know how many employees they have and how many mooncakes they bought? Like, if you're gonna steal like one extra one. It probably doesn't matter. You're probably going to get away with it. Yeah. And you'll get a slap catch on you, the wrist. They'll just be like, what? And you then mean, it's probably fine. And you could, even, you, could even, you could even be like, hey, I used this loophole to steal one. I, I like kind of already ate it, but like you should probably patch that loophole. You know, you could be like, I'll trade you a mooncake for a bug report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd probably get away with that. Yeah. 124 boxes of cakes? That's just stupid. I stole some micro USB cables. You can... If you, if you want, you can... You also told me about them. Yeah. So it's not really stealing at that point, is it? Okay. It's taking without permission, and then asking permission after the... Okay, that is kind of stealing. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, original... Ar oh, actually. Oh, original article for our sponsors. Speaking of whatever it is I was just talking about, mooncakes, uh, <laughs> freshbooks.com slash when. If you have trouble keeping track of your expense reports the way that Alibaba has trouble keeping track of <laughs> mooncakes, then you might want to try out FreshBooks if you are a small business owner, whether you run like a, a small plumbing um, company or like you do electrical work or you do uh, yard work or you run a small dance studio, you do computer technician work on the side, you paint houses, any kind of small business operation where you need a tool that allows you to track your expenses, track your hours, create and send invoices, collect payment, including through deposits if you don't want to take all the money up front or at the end, then FreshBooks is the tool for you. They have all the stuff that I just said and more, including the ability, once you've sent an invoice to a client, to see that they have seen the invoice and allow them to pay directly through FreshBooks. I actually don't have my talking points up, so I'm kind of lost at the moment. I think I hit everything. So there you pretty much have it. And if you're finding it complicated, you can reach out to their support staff where you will speak to a real human being. No automated phone system. Super cool. I mean, isn't that amazing? No escalations, no return calls, just answers. So head over to freshbooks.com slash when and claim your free trial today. You can use it for 30 days for free to find out if FreshBooks is right for you. And speaking of 30 day free trials, Linda figures they don't need to give you a 30 day free trial because 10 days is enough for you to get hooked on lynda.com. At least if you sign up using the lynda.com slash WAN show link. Yeah. If you sign up using the link through their uh, parent company or whatever, then it's actually a longer trial, which I think is a big load of horse plop. But there's nothing I can really do about that. I can offer you a 10-day free trial for lynda.com. On lynda.com, there's more than 3,000 courses in topics like web development, photography, visual design, business, uh, software training for programs like Excel, WordPress, Photoshop, photography, video editing, all kinds of great stuff. And the courses are taught by industry experts who are passionate about teaching. They've got new courses added every week. So whether you're looking to get a new job or just take your hobby to the next level, try out lynda.com. I can offer you a 10-day free trial. Not a better free trial, just 10 days of all you can eat access to lynda.com, after which time you can decide if it's right for you and plans start for just 25 bucks a month. So check it out over at lynda.com slash wanshow. Speaking of websites and the URLs that go with them, 
Beautiful. Squarespace. Squarespace. Build it. See what it did there? Oh, I like it. Yeah. If we do it in reverse, then it can't be wrong. Should you? No, wait, should you? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask, I think. <laughs> So Squarespace.com lets you create a beautiful website if... Sh should you? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> okay, so... Should you? find yourself wanting oh! to build a beautiful website, then you can use Squarespace.com. Should you? find yourself in need of tech support, they offer 24-7 tech support via live chat and email. Should you? Be pleased with the Squarespace website that you have created. You can take your trial website, which you have, I think it's 15 days to work on. Don't quote me on that. I can't forget. I can't forget. I can forget. I can't remember. Um, you can sign up for only 12 bucks a month and you get a free domain. Should you? Decide that you want to commit to Squarespace for an entire year. Should you? Decide that you want to sell things through your Squarespace website. They have commerce built into every one of their templates. And Should you? decide to be a complete butthead and create a website that's just a one-page internet presence <laughs> that doesn't give any bloody information about your company, your products, and or how they are related to each other. Then they do have their cover pages feature, which lets you get that online in a matter of minutes, which I guess is fine. Should you? find yourself in a situation where you really don't have a lot of time because you're too busy being like a web 2.0 startup and you're, you know, sipping your lattes and mocha lattes and frappa lattes and whatever it is Carmel that you Machiatos. eat to spend a lot of time writing out all of the copy for your website. But should you decide to build a more comprehensive website, Squarespace has got you covered there too. And it's so simple that should you find yourself 30 with no web skills whatsoever and running a tech company where that kind of thing is very embarrassing, <laughs> Squarespace can bail you out. So... Should you? No, I actually, well, I, that was just a pause because I wasn't sure what my transition was going to be, so now it's more difficult. Should you um, find all of this exciting? Yes. Uh, yes. You can use offer code WAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Yes. We did it. Oh, Fantastic. we're basically awful okay, people. Okay, so there's way more, far more interesting topics, like far below the fold. Oh, seriously? <laughs> so they hid, all, they hid all the interesting stuff on us this week. I mean, this is interesting. Okay, so Apple decided to put a yeah. barometric vent in the space where the iPhone 7 headphone jack would yeah. have been. So, so they're saying that uh, the, the, this feature can measure minor changes like climbing a flight of stairs. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's coming back down to Apple wanting to be a health measurement device company. That yeah. seems to be where they're headed. I mean, it's one thing to sell an iPhone for $1,000. It's a whole other thing to sell a medical device for $10,000. Um, yeah, so I can, I can see where the appeal of getting into... Um, Although hopefully we will wreck their hopes and dreams coming this... Hopefully not too long after this november oh are you going to be I working on that thing should I we should we tease it i don't think anyone else is going to rip off the idea sure i sent a follow-up they said they're still down for november so okay. i'm working with a local university i'm not going to name who specifically it's a ba university it, they're awesome though yeah so like and I i'm not just saying that because like i know one person really well who flunked out of it who flunked out of it ah really yeah. i thought it was a different one nope Okay. No, I went all the way to the top before I <laughs> fell all the way down. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, they're they're awesome. They're really good. And I hold working... I hold no ill will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be working with their sports cardiology department to bench to do a benchmark of sorts against fitness trackers. In yeah. Like hopefully more than just weight. I want to see if we can do sleep tracking but I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. Okay. Um, just because of like lab hours and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm going to try to figure out because they do have a mobile thing. Anyways, we'll try to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but mainly heart rate tracking. Yeah. So, so they have, so basically we're going to get him hooked up to the and proper gear. We're going to get a range as well because heart rate trackers work uh, more or less effectively against different people. So we're going to get like an athlete from that school and myself and like, probably the guy that's running the program to get like oh, I thought a, you were going to say me. I oh. thought we were going from athlete to you to me and I was going to be like 
<laughs> well, A, you're a dick, and B, that's probably fine. <laughs> um, oh, no, your cardio is way better than mine. I guarantee it. My knees are just messed up. I know. I'm hoping like, that they're better. I can move until I can't move anymore. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a whole other thing. But, yeah, so yeah. that should actually be really cool. That was sprung largely from a while ago when we were talking on the WAN show when yeah. Fitbit was getting, like, lawsuits for being bad yeah, things basically not reporting things correctly yeah so we want to look into that more deeply yeah. um so yeah tracking health things with little tiny devices that aren't very proven yet might not be a thing or might yeah by the time we do that we should have an, uh, an eye watch too um yeah. so I'll... unfortunately a lot of the like watches that we got are going to be slightly replaced by then but did how many of them did we buy a few uh, to be fair, though, a lot was an overstatement. I think only two of them were re replaced by that. How much were they? One of them was the iWatch, which we didn't buy for it. That's true. That's yeah. true. So I think it's only one, maybe. I think I did end up paying for that, though. We didn't buy it for yeah, that. Yeah, no, I bought it to we review already had it, though. It. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. most of them, like, Microsoft hasn't come out with a new one. Yeah. Garmin hasn't come out with a new one. Everyone's like, most like of them Apple Watch. No, it is the iWatch forever. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. So anyway, so... The barometer is maybe going to be useful for cool stuff like measuring altitude, which I guess is pretty neat. Um, I don't know. Cool. I would trade an iPhone. I would trade a headphone Hell jack yeah. for that Definitely. personally. Um, but at least they did something. You know, with what would it. be interesting if they made a barometer that went yeah. exactly flush with the phone. Mm -hmm. If it was plugged into your headphone jack, you know, what would be really cool is if they made a barometer that could tell you how big they are. What? A barometer. Oh. Wow. 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 Logitech <laughs> bought uh, Cytec Logitech. from Mad Cat. Logitech? Logitech. They're, <laughs> they're, nope, they only make phones now. <laughs> <laughs> phones and headsets. Uh, Logitech bought Cytec from Mad Cats. This is awesome. Yeah. I am excited. Yeah. You, you can say why you're excited first. Um, well, okay, we have a review. We both like flight sticks. We don't have enough time to spend with them. But we I both like all like kinds of sticks. sticks. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I like to put my hands around them like this. I have a review on the Warthog, and you have a review on a SciTech system. I don't remember exactly which one. Um, X52. X52. Mm. And yeah. I'm happy because I think Logitech will do more with it. I don't okay. know if most people just go this way. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't say I was good at this. I like them. Right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so why I'm excited about this is there are things that SciTech, the division of Mad... Okay, there are things that Mad Cats does well. And there are things that SciTech used to do well before they were acquired by Mad Cats, like, um, you know, actually making these products for crying out loud, like actually making joysticks, because that's not that. I mean, it used to be that, you know, other than Thrustmaster and SciTech, there were actual brands that I mean, Microsoft used to make them. Yeah. Logitech used to have them like. Yeah. And then it just died along with the space sim. Um, along with the space sim and Microsoft's flight simulator. and like Yeah. yeah. So there's stuff that SciTech did well. And then there's stuff that Logitech does well, which is make a good idea, which is what SciTech had and uh, Mad Cats owned. Um, so take a good idea and a product people want to buy and make sure that the quality of it is good and that it lasts for a long time. So I would be really, really excited to see what kind of SciTech products we see yes. with some kind of care and attention given to making them feel good and last a long time and operate well. Uh, this will hopefully line up with like the G29 and G920, the, the driving force steering wheels, which I reviewed a while back, and were actually like really awesome. Just saying. You should go check out that review. They're really cool. Yeah, and I told you I brought the Obutto to the office now, right? So the plan, I think, what Jake wanted to do was uh, set it up in the VR room. Like, we might end up just taking all the furniture out of there. I want it all yeah, out of there. Something yeah, something like that. Having one, like, small bench could be helpful. Yeah, or even one couch. Or um, one, like, or like a love seat. Or yes. like one chair yeah. or something yeah. like yeah. that, yeah. I think, would be, would be pretty cool. Because having a viewer for whatever you're doing is nice. Yeah. But we don't need, like, that giant thing. Yeah. 
Um, and having the Obato in that one like nook corner thing yeah. is would be awesome. That'd be perfect. Yeah. So I'm I'm super excited about this. I'm not a Logitech fanboy. I just have a certain amount of respect for building products that are designed to last, and Logitech seems to generally care about that for the most part. Yeah. Um, all right, Google Maps can show how much you are speeding. Dun, da, da, da. So the original article here is from Ars Technica. And users report that a speed limit sign is showing up in the bottom corner of Google Maps. It's about time because this has been a feature on other GPS programs for quite some time and is something that I personally am often curious about and don't understand why I need to like look at signs for anymore in the modern digital age. Very right. cool. That's probably about all we got to say for that. There's no like, uh, it's just random user reports apparently. Nothing official, so Google hasn't stated anything. This is not surprising, they do this all the time. Yeah. There will probably be a blog post once it's much more ubiquitous across their platform. Yeah. They probably only roll it out to a very yep. small percentage of people. So it's a server side switch, uh, but the code started showing up in Google Maps 9.35. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I wish it would also tell you how fast you're going, but I understand why they don't do that. Like, uh, I don't know, you probably haven't been driving long enough, but uh, when I first started driving, those, uh, those radar things, those displays on the side of the road that tell you how fast you're going when you're in a construction zone or a school zone or whatever else, they didn't have a cap on them. So people would blow past them to clock themselves. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So now, when you're going more no, than... No, I definitely remember that. Okay. That was a thing. Now, when you're going more than 20 over, it just says too fast. Slow yeah. down. Yeah. Um, so I understand why they don't necessarily want to put that in, because for the same reason that, that they don't build in tools to like tell you how much you beat the original estimated time by, um, I think my record is like 15 minutes on a 55 minute drive or something like that. But you have to do it manually. You have to do it yourself if you want to know yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, but that's why they don't build that in because they don't want to encourage people to speed. Um, yeah. Oh, well, here's an, uh, here's an interesting, uh, here's an interesting article. <sighs> yeah. Microsoft crashes Google's latest <clears throat> Chrome battery life claims. Dun, 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 dun. So this is a video that they actually um, ran a little while ago and that... Uh, I'm still working on it. We, I can talk about it openly right okay, now. That we are working on replicating to find out if this is actually true or not. There's problems with this whole deal and a lot of them revolve around Windows 10 just being like a little... This might be the wrong word for it. Schizophrenic? Yeah. Crazy? It'll just do, like, nutsoid things. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Um, like, we've got four identical machines. Yeah. We have tried to run these tests. I, like, tweeted about it at some point. And basically, I Luke's run into everything under the sun. So many different problems. And, like, these are all the same machine. Huh? All running at the same time with the same software installed, the same settings, everything. Oh, you were, like, channeling Dennis there. A little bit, yeah. Oh. And they'll be different by many hours with the same browser doing the same thing. So that's like, the thing is we're trying to do just uh, the control. Yeah. With them all running the same browser. Many hours different. Same laptop, same browser, exactly same load. They'll be watching a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Same programs installed, same things running, which is like essentially nothing. One of them will last for like, uh, I think I was doing Google Chrome, but not this update of it and it's not the exact same load that they have here and it's not the exact same laptop. So don't worry too much about comparing it to the yeah. numbers that we just saw. But I think it was like three and a half hours. Two of them lasted for about three and a half hours. Yeah. And then two exactly the same laptops as the other ones we were just looking at would last for like five hours and 15 minutes. It was just like, what is going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm picturing the Jackie Chan meme, the like... My head is full of bleh. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I just... What? I don't know. I, I'm going to do like full reformats on all of them. And I think what I'm going to have to do is like completely disable all of like Windows Defender and Firewall and like everything that Windows can properly have. There was a problem lately where if you had sound enhancements enabled, um, even, even if none of the boxes were checked, if you had none of the sound enhancements on, but you had the sound enhancements enabled, it could take up like 20% of your CPU at a time or some crap like that. Like, oh my God. So, uh, yeah, 
I don't know. It's a nightmare right now. But hopefully, we will have our own benchmarks of that eventually. Great. British scientists have developed a cheaper, unbreakable touchscreen for smartphones. The original article here is from news.com.au. Have you posted? I have not. Got it. I have not posted a thing. So I already hate it. I hate it so much. I think they're stupid and liars, and I'm angry. Cool. They Hit said me. unbreakable. I'm getting really tired of this crap. It's really starting to piss me off. <laughs> oh, our device is uh, waterproof. Uh, yes, you do a whole bunch more research and find from like a third party that it's like IP67. It's not waterproof. It's not the right word. So much anger. Unbreakable is bullshit. I guarantee you if the US was like, yep, we'll nuke it. It wouldn't be there anymore. God. Stop it. I just, like, someone in the chat said triggered. Yes, I think these words are literally getting to the point where they're starting to, like, mentally trigger me. Whenever I see someone that's like, oh, yes, our battery bank is waterproof. I'm just like, Gah! Like, I think they should, like, be fined fairly significant amounts of money because it's actually just completely bullshit. Maybe that's why he doesn't take pictures of you. Because you do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's very unhelpful. Unbreakable. Why are you taking all these pictures around the... Oh, you're reviewing that yes. camera. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of cheating to take all of your pictures in, like, a studio with no, studio I'm lights. Just doing that. You're not just doing that? When he was in my office and took a picture, that's definitely not studio lights. Okay. But anyways, okay, okay, I think they should actually genuinely be fined because they're uh, misleading information about their products. I think so, too. The problem they're is... They're lying about their products. The problem is who's going to oversee this? It's a, it, there, there are organizations for this in the States. They're just I not know. doing it. They're just not doing it because yeah. they have, like, bigger fish to fry. Yeah. So basically, they're underfunded and undermanned, but if they could figure out a way but to they actually just get hire these fines going... a bunch of, like, not-as-well-paid employees that just hunt these, like, asshole battery companies and shit like that and just wreck all of them until they all just stop, and then that would be good. Because, like, I'm I'm really tired of it. Your battery bank is not waterproof. Shut Twitch up. chat is just, like, triggered, 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 triggered. Oh, I am, though. It's, oh, man, it, it pisses me off. All right, so it's reportedly a fifth of the cost of current touchscreens. And then I have no idea what this is supposed to. Oh, 14 Australian dollars compared yeah. to 70 Australian dollars a square meter for indium tin oxide and this technology could be rolled out as soon as 2018. So currently the electrodes and touchscreens are made from indium tin oxide, but the supplies are slowly running out because that's what humans do. And so they're searching for the next electrically conductive material that could be used by manufacturers until we use up all of that. So scientists in Britain have been looking at hybrid materials that can conduct electricity and using a simple and inexpensive method, they're producing hybrid electrodes from silver nanowires and graphene. So, okay, once, if this gets released or anything, can we get it? And can I do like a tech racks level <laughs> bullshit video where I just destroy the thing and then just like end it with like screw you and then just like move on? I feel like I'll if I agree it. to this I'll now, you're it. going to remember and I you're will. going to actually do it. I will. It's up to you. Okay. No, no, nothing is ever up to me. Oh, straw pull. It is up to the viewers. Because I, okay, so to explain a little bit, I'm going to go back in conversations. That Microsoft web browser test thing, the reason why we're doing it is because I want to start a video series where we, I don't remember exactly what it was called. I think we were going to call it Shit Manufacturers Say. Yeah, going yeah. back to like memes from a long time ago. Yeah, um, But I'm old. It, it, was, it was basically testing claims of manufacturers. And the reason why I thought of doing this kind of thing was making my battery bank videos in Mexico because I think every single brand except for Chiro lied. Right. Which is like insane. And it brings back that same thing from before where like everyone uses clickbait because everyone has to use clickbait. Right. Because they wouldn't be able to sell because everyone else is lying. Yeah. And Chiro saying water resistant looks worse than the other people saying waterproof, right. even though the other people are lying. Okay. Well, apparently no one thinks that I'm right. Or 5% do. <laughs> All right. You win. <laughs> So All go right. ahead. You get to break the first uh, bone in 2018 or whatever. Whenever it actually happens. <laughs> yeah, whenever it actually yeah. happens. Maybe yeah. you could put an arrow through it. Sweet. No, it's been done. Oh, okay. Marcus did it with the uh, sapphire glass. Okay. Is Mar is that his name? Marcus. Yeah. Yeah, it's Marcus or Marquez, or Marquez. Brownlee. Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought you were talking about tech rack. Oh, no. no yeah. No. Okay. No, Marcus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I don't know. I just, that stuff really pisses me off. This is great. FBI director, cover up your webcam with a piece of tape. Love it. Original article here is if from MSN.com. If you have a C920, com. they sell little plastic flip cover things for it that are actually pretty nice. Check that out. Oh, do you have one? Uh, I'm, it's literally been ordered already, but I don't have it yet. Interesting. So uh, James Comey defended putting a piece of tape over his personal laptop's webcam. Claims the security step was a common sense one that most should take. Many ASUS laptops have um, slidey covers. The little, you've seen that, right? Yep. It's like a mechanical switch yep. and you like... I don't think they have them anymore. Really? Yeah, I think it's because your old one has it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's less common now. Yeah. Um, so there you go. So, yeah, mom and dad. That laptop that you now have, use the little thing. So the quote is, there are some, there's some sensible things you should be doing, and that's one of them. You do that so people who don't have the authority don't look at you. I think that's a good thing. Fair enough, man. Cool. Um, uh, apparently someone from an oil company, da, 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 Quest Integrity Group, tried to impersonate Elon Musk by making uh, an email account, Elon... Elon Tesla at yahoo.com and then sent an email to Tesla's CFO <laughs> asking for non-public information <laughs> like company sales and financial projections. What the hell? <laughs> oh yeah, this will totally work. I'll make it Elon Tesla at yahoo.com. I mean, you can tell he's old because he uses Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> Yeah, but, oh, man. That's hilarious. Uh, come on. It's so, like uh, just just a random email from, from Elon. Hey, yeah, could I get some, uh, you know, some uh, financial projections? That, that would be good if you can just email those to me right now. If you could, if you could email them at Yahoo, yeah. then, uh, yeah. you know, I don't want to use the Google. Because uh, <laughs> Yahoo sounds more credible yeah. somehow. Yeah, says Elon Musk. Says Elon Musk. That's wonderful. Uh, oh, <sighs> this is a rumor. So the original article here is from Overclock3D.net. There are leaked supposed GTX 1080 Ti specifications. Dun, 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 dun. So hypothetically, it'll be somewhere between the 1080 and the Titan X. Uh, it'll be very close to the Titan X, and it will have uh, slightly fewer CUDA cores, slightly fewer SMs. Uh, It'll have uh, blah, 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 384-bit bus, 12 gigs RAM. I'll no GDDR5X. No GDDR5X. Oh, interesting. Well, there's where a lot of the cost savings is coming from. I wonder if that's a big part of the reason why Titan X is so expensive. Mm-hmm. 1080 is also a lot more expensive than 1070. And it's like 12 gigs of it. Ah, and then again, oh, no, maybe not. That probably, math probably doesn't work for that. Anyway, apparently it is clocked higher, though and has the same TDP, so we can expect then that much like with the original Titan X and the 980 Ti, that the Titan XP and the 1080 Ti are actually going to end up performing very, very similarly, because if it's clocked, if it has fewer functional units and it's, they're able to clock it a little higher out of the box, it'll probably boost a little higher too. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if basically anyone who bought a Titan X is going to be crying um, once the 1080 Ti gets released. But I mean, that's the price you pay for being on the bleeding edge. Like, I get it. Um, and you should get it too. Yep, that's kind of how that goes. I think, I think I brought something up about that in the Titan XP review, but I don't remember. I don't remember either. That was a very blurry time yeah, in my life. it was. With the whole workcation and, like, people hating it. I have a new idea for a Christmas well, Titan, bonus okay. this year. Titan XP. That took, doesn't involve going I anywhere. have heard. Yes. Yeah. It's cool. Um, oh. Okay. Well, keep it to yourself. No. Uh, I know. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, moving on. Uh, what else we got? You know what? I think that's pretty much it. Everything else in here is pretty boring. Apple Japan ordered to pay $118 million in tax for underreporting income. Surprise, surprise. Um, so they're mad. Uh, Japan's mad. Apple's probably mad. Everyone's mad. So, yeah. Everyone's angry. I'm not like mad. Me. I don't care. Maybe Apple Japan heard someone. Wait, Apple Japan's the one that's mad, right? I think everyone's mad, probably. Oh. 
It's like when you don't. Have pay you everyone your... told each other that the devices were waterproof? And they were just like. <laughs> and they're just all triggered now. You don't understand how that works. Blah. Yeah. Yeah. That is probably exactly how it went down. Yeah. And on that completely intelligible note, um, <laughs> we bid you adieu. Same bat time, same bat channel next week. Adieu. <laughs> Six now? Yeah. <laughs> we can't just keep carrying more cameras. There is a limit. I don't know. You might is find a way. A I think there is. Yeah, I think there Brandon's are. Brandon's musculature is different than normal people. I've, I've like observed this over doing shows with him. He can carry large amounts of weight for ridiculous amounts of time. Just not up a mountain. No, he did. Uh, yeah. Actually, he did technically get he there. He got all the way. Yeah, not in time to film anything, mind you. No, but, but he got all the way. I'll do it.